We're standing next to a Miss Kim lilac, and this is one of my favorite lilacs for sure. But we're also going to take a look at Bloomering lilac and the Dwarf Korean lilac. The Miss Kim lilac, this is a great shrub. It's got a lilac bloom that fades to a white color, got the great fragrance also. The leaf is interesting. It's got this little cup shape to it, which is kind of rare for the lilacs, but very unique to the Miss Kim. It also gets a purple fall color, not, not a brilliant purple, but it fades to that purple, uh, which is very, very showy. So another great characteristic of that Miss Kim lilac. Now this one here, this has been here about 10 years, never been touched. It's only about five feet tall. You know, it can get bigger up to that six to eight foot range. One of the reasons this is staying smaller is I've got these Colorado spruce in the backdrop and they just take a lot of the moisture. So it's just a little bit more competitive here. If you take a look at this other lilac, this one was planted about the same time, but it's actually up to about its mature height, you know, getting up into that eight feet. And six to eight feet, that's about what they're labeled out as. I have seen them bigger, and this one is definitely pushing that. Now pruning, if you wanna have a lilac bloom, it does take a full year to develop that flower bud. So if you're gonna shear lilacs and you wanna shape them, we're getting close to the stage where you would start doing your trimming. Let that flower bloom finish, go in, start shearing into the foliage. That's going to stimulate new growth, which is what pruning does. It'll stimulate new growth, leave those leaves on. That's where your flower bud is setting for the next season. One of the other big pluses of Miss Kim Lilac is no suckering. The old-fashioned common lilac, which is Syringa vulgaris, it's got a strong rhizome, tends to come up in places you really don't want to see it, not on the Miss Kim. Holds its own one location. We're next to a couple bloomerang lilacs, which is an ever-blooming lilac, meaning you're going to get that nice spring lilac flowering we're all used to, very fragrant, very showy, and then you're going to get some repeat bloom throughout the season and a little bit more into fall, but that's more sporadic. Now these are just coming back from a rejuvenation process we did about three months ago. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that went. It seems like the hardest part about a rejuvenation on a bigger overgrown shrub like this is actually, you know, getting yourself in there, getting started. And you don't have to find that perfect spot right away. We're just gonna get the overall shape at about that two foot level cut back. And then we can go back in and we can, we can tweak it out and take those cuts back to where we really need them. Ha! Check that out, so see. This is one of those projects you really just gotta, you gotta set your mind to it. It's, it's, it's a workout, it quite is, you know. A lot of these branches are just gnarled together. All right, now that we're most of the way through here, we're gonna switch over to the head shears. All right, so there you go, we've got the bloomerangs wrapped up, unfortunately. Some of the projects that show up after that are we've got some deck paint here. Due to that shrub being too high, it's created too much moisture. Uh, we'll have to deal with that. So, and uh, I guess we'll have to hide the patio furniture a little better now too. But uh, all in all, we'll uh, do some follow-up videos on these throughout the season to check their progress. And uh, it doesn't seem like it would be possible, but man, these are gonna look fantastic, I think, by the end of the season. So you can see here the stages of which that bloomerang came out of the dormancy after the rejuvenation. We had an initial bud break. As that accelerated with the warm temperatures, it just kept getting better and better and better. You can see they've come back quite strong from that severe cutback. And rejuvenation is nothing more than that. You're just basically starting the plant over. Miss Kim Lilac, Dwarf Korean Lilac, and the bloomerang all rejuvenate quite well. Now with Miss Kim, if you cut it back that hard, you're gonna skip a full year of bloom. You're not gonna see it. I don't know yet on this one, since the bloomerang will bloom on that new growth, I think we're actually gonna see a nice little showy bloom this fall. For our dwarf Korean lilac example, we've basically got a shrub that's put onto a tree standard, the Japanese tree lilac, that's the rootstock. By the grafting process, you're fusing a dwarf Korean stem with a Japanese tree lilac stem. What's happened, if you look up here, 
You've got the rootstock, Japanese tree lilac. It's grown all the way through. It's suckered out. So that should be pruned out. As far as pruning, we're at that stage with the dwarf Korean. All the flowers are completely spent or done. So this would be the time you want to shear back, encourage that new growth, and then the flower bud would set for the next year. So there you have it, three of my favorite lilacs. Make sure you get to your garden center and get one planted. The sooner you get them in the ground, the sooner you can enjoy all those fragrant blooms. Thanks for watching Garden Hike. We'll see you again.